H- have you got to meet Trump? No. Oh, I met him. I met him in Kentucky. <laughs> what was that like? Um, it was very brief. Well, okay. the event was very interesting. I was there for the Derby, and I was up. There's a glass cafe above the Kentucky Derby grounds. There's about 150,000 people there. It was the first Derby after COVID, and uh, Trump was. Everyone knew like the whole crowd of 150,000 people plus the 300 or so in this restaurant, they all knew Trump was going to show up in the afternoon. It was like... Just bring that to your mouth a little bit, Mark. Yeah. It was like being in Rome, I imagine, or being around the Kennedys back in the 1960s. Like the place was just buzzing. He's so famous. Mm-hmm. Like it's just an insane level of fame, right? Because, well, he was a TV star and that's not an easy thing to pull off and for quite a while. And he was a real estate magnet. And that's also quite difficult. And then he was president and ridiculously controversial. Like yeah. he's insanely famous. Yeah. And you could just feel that mm. that emperor-like worship in the air, you know? And yes. this is actually, I think, a flaw in the American political system okay. because in Britain, the queen bears that. She's a figurehead. She's Imagine mm-hmm. there's four branches of government, okay. executive, legislative, judicial, and symbolic. Okay. The president bears the symbolic weight in the U.S. It's not good because that tilts the... Huh. It tilts the polity towards... Well, towards deification of the president. That's why you have the first lady. It's like, what the hell's that? Yeah. There's no first lady in Canada. Yeah. You know, nobody cares who the prime minister's wife is. And that's right. That's rightly so. It's like the first lady. Well, that's the queen. Yeah. You guys don't need a queen. Yeah. But you want one. Yeah. Right. With a blessed mother. Yeah. Well, (laughs) that's a better substitute. (laughs) Yeah. All right, so you're at this Kentucky Derby. You're feeling the energy. Yeah, well, did you meet him? I, I had flown out that day to do a talk, I could convocation somewhere, and I came back just as the air space was closed, and then I made it to the Derby, like, with about 10 minutes to spare before they locked it down. The army was everywhere. The place was just buzzing, and Trump strolled in, and it was like, well, that much fame gives people a, a tremendous charisma, you know, and It's a lot for one person. It's a lot for one person. I I think he has a good family, and thank God for that, and he seems to have managed that well. And I know people who know him, and they have faith in him privately. He's a, a bully, and a very good one. He's an unbelievably sophisticated 13-year-old bully. Interesting. Like, his ability to wield a nickname is unparalleled. <laughs> no one can right? match He's it. great. He's yeah. great at that. And so, and that's a real superpower, although, and it's, it's a mixed blessing because he's a 13 year old bully. You know, I'm not trying to reduce him. Yeah. Being a 13 year old bully is kind of handy when you're dealing with the dictator of North Korea. Hmm. You know, you want that kind of playground unpredictability. It's like, don't fuck with me. Mm -hmm. You don't know what I'm capable of, you know, and a more sensible person, you could argue, hasn't got that, you know? And so I don't know what to make of that. Hmm. There's that, there's that trickster disagreeable trickster element to trump that also yeah. gives him that vicious sense of humor he's insanely funny oh, he is i have a book <laughs> which i love it's a library edition beautiful volume called the collected poetry of donald trump and it's all his tweets typeset <laughs> beautifully and they are they're hilarious they are. like he's he's got a barbed tongue man yeah. He's well, a the, viper. The, well, the other thing is, you know, people keep talking about his temperament and how stupid he is. This is yeah, what people yeah, say. Yeah. But I, I've never uh, seen him lose his cool in any of these yeah. uh, interviews. You don't, you're not, you don't do what Trump's done and, and be stupid. Yeah. Like, first of all, so I have a friend for whom he built a multi-million dollar building in Chicago. And uh, he finished it below cost and on time. Hmm. Well, there's no more corrupt industry than construction, especially in Chicago or New York. Well, Trump played that successfully, and he built those buildings. You know, and and my friend told me that Trump was there every week, walking through the building, checking things out, you know, and he was successful at that. Mm -hmm. And then he was a reality TV star for a long time. That's not easy. Yeah. Right. So he's got that showman element that's really integral to American culture. Yeah. You know, you saw that on display in the Elvis movie, for example, with what's his name? Colonel. Okay. I didn't watch that. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's great. It's great American movie. And Colonel, I don't remember the name of him, his manager, but he's a real charlatan, a showman, (laughs) almost a psychopath. Uh And yet he made Elvis. Like it was this weird, this is part of American culture, right? There's that talent and ability combined with 
this entrepreneurial showmanship and Trump has that, you yeah. know, and that's a, that's a power too. So did you get that to shake his hand? Did, yeah, you, so yeah, did yeah, he know who you yeah. were? How did the conversation no, go? No, 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 no. I don't believe so. Yeah. It was very brief. Yeah. And so I've been trying to finagle him onto my podcast oh. and I've made contact that might actually break the internet. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, I don't think he'll do it. And the okay. reason for that is he doesn't have anything to gain. Yeah. Has, I don't think. Has Rogan tried to get him on? Because that would break the yeah, internet. Yeah, that's for sure. I don't know. You know, Joe tends to veer away from the political. And yeah. I can understand that, too. You know, I've I've had political speakers on my podcast, and oh, usually it doesn't work it's well. brutal. Yeah, they don't get many views, generally. Well, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like they have a script. Well, and and they're, they're, it's like they're reading from something. They're not a human being who's flesh and blood. They're yeah, well, that's Aaron, right? That's something. the political voice that turns toward the worship of the golden calf at the drop of a hat. Which is why people like Trump, because you get the sense yeah. that even if you don't like him, he seems like he's being honest. Yeah, yeah. As, well, a, that's as opposed right. to There's Mike an, Pence, yeah, when yeah. he got up and would start talking, you're like, you were made in a lab. I don't mean There's, disrespect to him. But, well, I guess I do. That was a pretty disrespectful thing to say. But <laughs> it, he came off very... Uh, yeah, well, Trump has that unvarnished element, and that's also something that's very appealing to working class people, yeah. right? Because they, he doesn't talk down to people. Yes, he he's talks very good at like that. A lot of people talk, yeah. like we talk. Yeah, yeah, well, and he's got that gift of spontaneity. Mm -hmm. You know, he doesn't craft his speeches, mm -hmm. and of course, that makes him a bit of a loose cannon. But yep. pe people like that for the same reason they like these long form discussions. Yeah. It's like, well, we know. You might be deceiving us, but not in a practiced and calculating way, right? Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. some of your personality flaws are leaking through, but, yeah. but at least that's kind of like honest deception. Yeah. I thought when, when Trump won, I thought, well, they, they preferred the spontaneous lies of Trump to the calculated lies of Hillary. Yeah. You know, and that's very cynical, but, but there's still, there's something about it that's accurate. Yeah. Yeah, wild. And and I would like to say a few things in Trump's favor. Please do. A profound favor. No wars on Trump's watch. Right. He got no credit for that. That's a big deal. We've had plenty of wars in the interim. And God only knows if we're in the middle of World War III. We certainly could be. Right. Right. And God only knows where it's going. And so, and then the next thing is, Trump managed the Abraham Accords. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he should have got a Nobel Peace Prize for that. Obviously, it was the biggest move forward to peace. In the, it's even held through the Hamas crisis. It's a bloody miracle. You know, and if Biden would have had an ounce of integrity on the foreign policy front, he would have rewarded Trump for the Abraham Accords. Maybe Trump would have just rode off into the sunset if he would have got some due credit. And they would have brought Saudi Arabia into the fold because that was on the table. I know that for a fact, right? And so Biden, nope, there was no way they were going to give Trump credit. And so they didn't pull the Saudis in. And that was a big mistake, a, a big mistake, mm -hmm. right? And maybe this whole catastrophe that's emerging now is a consequence of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm very unimpressed by that.